everybody. Um, so I will begin with the karakia. We'll open the meeting, 9.31. Um, where is it? Here we go. Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, ki a mā kina kina ki uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai, e hi aki ana te atakura, he tio, he huka, he hauhu, te hei Māori ora. So welcome everybody to today's um, Kawata Hatipi Regulatory Processes Committee meeting. Tēnā koutou katoa, nā mai ki te hui o te kōnahira o pōniki e tēnei rā. Um, so please let me or the Democracy Services Advisor know if you intend to leave the meeting, and we're planning to have morning tea at 10.30. Um, and welcome to everybody who's in the gallery, whether you're submitting or just here to um, watch the process. Welcome. I'm, I'm Sarah Free. I'm um, a chair of the committee. All right, so um, apologies. I don't believe we have any at present. The mayor will be um, not able to attend the second session that we have later on today, but we're all here. We have Councillor McNulty online and Poe Wheelers Kelly online. Oh, okay. And Councillor Abdurrahman is joining us online. He's joined. Yeah, okay, lovely. Um, so, so just as far as apologies, um, I might be a bit intermittent since there's two or three of us sick. Um, so if I'm jumping okay. off because one or the other, but I will be doing my best to be online today. Thank you, Councillor McNulty. So we don't have any apologies to note at the present point of time. We have a conflict of interest declarations. Do we have any of those? We don't have to appear to. Um, the confirmation of the minutes from the last meeting. So I move the motion that the... Do we need to vote on them if there are none? Okay. For partial absences, we will um, note that the Mayor is going to be absent from the second half of the meeting. Um, I'll put the motion that we accept those apologies for her absence the second half of the meeting. Those in favour, please press one. Those against, please press two. And do we have a seconder? I think I'll thank you very much. <laughs> um, so we're waiting on some votes for those partial um, absence for the mayor. Did you get mine, Sarah? Uh, not yet. Have you voted yes? I think it's yeah, oh. been noted now. Okay. And that's been carried unanimously. Um, conflict of interest declarations. I'll just ask again, Jack, do we have anybody with a conflict of interest? No, so that's fine. Confirmation of minutes. So I'm going to move the motion that this committee approves the minutes of our last meeting, which was held on the 22nd of February 2024, which have been circulated and that they be taken as read and confirmed as an accurate record of that meeting. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Chung. You okay with that? And we'll vote. Oh, okay, true. Councillor Calvert. Thank you. One if you agree and two if you don't agree. And that is carried unanimously. We do not have any items which are not on the agenda and no public participation. So we will move straight into our submission process. So the first up is Tony Payne from Mary Potter Hospice. Tony, welcome. Um, you have five minutes, which needs to include time for questions. I uh, know that's not much time, but we have all ears. No, that's fine. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, look, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you again. I am here to tell you that the changes that you made to the 
Newtown parking scheme after the consultation that we took part in last year have done little, if anything, to ease the problems that we think this, this scheme will create for us at the hospice. Can I offer you an assurance that we are doing all we can to maximise the use of the 27 car parks that we do have on site? Um, we're encouraging staff to carpool, we're encouraging staff to use public transport. Um, I rode my bike to talk to you here today. Indeed, such is the hospice's enthusiasm for cycling is that Mary Potter Hospice came first in the uh, Love to Ride Challenge for the Wellington Healthcare Organisations with staff of over 100. <laughs> um, so we, we are really embracing, we're trying to be good citizens here, but can I give you a, a couple of scenarios that this, this scheme will create for us? Um, we, as you know, have an inpatient unit in Main Street that relies on our nursing and healthcare assistant staff turning up at the hospital at a particular time. Um, our staff live all over the Greater Wellington. They come in from Calberty Coast, and for, some, for many of them, public transport and cycling is just not an option. Um, if a staff member doesn't turn up, um, so it's come, someone's driving in from Calberty, if they don't turn up first thing in the morning, that means the night staff can't go home and go to bed and it means our ability to care for the patients that we have in the hospice is significantly diminished because we are short-staffed in an environment where we're already short-staffed because the health system's um, falling apart. So we have a, a very high risk that staff won't be able to get the par a park that they need on the street because they can't park on our site because we need those parks for visitors and for our fleet cars and for volunteers. They have, there's a very high risk that they simply won't be able to turn up for work. They're already driving around for 20 minutes trying to find a park in Newtown. This will make that significantly harder and it will impact on patient care and our ability to recruit staff. The second scenario is we obviously have a lot of visitors coming up to the hospice. We have a family flat where family come and live in the hospice um, and we have families with their loved ones as they are spending their last days on earth um, in the hospice. And so visitors are uh, routinely parking on site and sometimes they need to use on street car parking as well. If we ring you up and say, please come to the hospice, the time is near, you need to be here, the last thing they want to think about is car parking and the last thing they want to think about is whether they've got one hour or two hour or three hours left on their car park on the street. So we, you will, if, there, if the only parks available are three hour car parks, we've got, we've got to have to be saying to our visitors, we're sorry your loved one's dying, but you have to go and move your car or you're going to get a parking ticket. So both of those scenarios I think are realistic scenarios and they simply make our, our, our job and the lives of our visitors and patients all that much harder. So can I say to you that if you go ahead with these changes, please do so in the knowledge that you will be making our work and our ability to care for patients much, much harder. We're an organisation that does hard work and we're already facing a lot of pressure with shortages in the health system. These changes will make our work and our ability to do that good work that much harder. If you must go ahead with these changes, can you please make sure that for organisations like the hospice and other health organisations that you see us as residents, so we routinely have bet between 10 and 15 people living in, on, in our building every night. So see us as residents and provide us with a significant number of residents coupons so we can use those coupons for visitors and for staff and a significant number of visitor car parks, uh, visitor coupons so we can use those for visitors. Um, we would love it if you could provide those to us at no cost. We're a charity and we already run at a deficit. Um, so if you must go ahead, know that it will make things for us harder and please try and ameliorate that by providing us with a good supply of the of coupons that we can use so that we can make use of the, the car parks which we need, which are car parks that are available for eight hours on the street. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Rogers. Thank you very much for um, coming in and, and sharing your experience at the hospice. Um, in some of that, you talked about people who are coming from quite far to work and, and a lot of different scenarios that were impacting your organisation and the care you provide. I was wondering if you had had some thought about what the underlying issues were around the access to the hospice. Did, for, in your experience, is it that people can't afford housing or the public transport isn't good enough? Or oh, I think it's like just where we... we our workforce are, are professionals who are nurses and doctors and social workers and OTs and they live in different parts of the city. Mm. Um, if you, 
if you need to be at work at seven o'clock in the morning, the public transport system, and you have to take two buses, the public transport system in Wellington is not good enough to guarantee you're going to get there at seven o'clock in the morning. Mm. Um, the buses um, don't come up Main Street, so if you are if you are if you're a visitor and you're frail or you're, you're elderly, you have to walk up the hill, and that's a that's a, that's a challenge. Um, and we know Park and and Newtown's hard to get to. Mm. I mean, so there's a there's a perfect storm here of things that make it hard to get to Newtown. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so those, I think those are the biggest barriers. And then we have a very limited number of car parks mm. on site. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Chung, I will let you, but it will need to be topped. Thank you very much um, for coming this morning, Tony. I really appreciate it and appreciate the work that you do. Um, you were asking about residence car parking. Um, how many of those would you actually require to cover the um, the staff that come in? That we, we, we've done, we've surveyed our staff and talked about where they park. So we have, uh, during the week, during the day, we have 50 staff a week, so about about 10 a day, mm. who who park on, currently park on the street and park and do so for eight hours. Mm. So so 10 a day would be would be the, the number that we're looking for. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank I you. absolutely support this, so we'll help you any way I can. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, we are out of time, but it's been really useful hearing from you in person, so thank you. Um, right, we would move now to James. Uh, or is, is James still coming? Yeah, James is yeah. online. James is online. <laughs> Welcome, James. Kia ora, thank you. Um, yes, ka James Harris, circling on. I was just going to say it's five minutes, which goes by very quickly, which needs to include questions too. Oh, thank you very much. Well, um, yes, yeah, so I'm speaking just as a resident, not that far from the hospice at the south end of Coromandel Street. Um, lived there for 30 years, and I think this is fantastic what you're proposing. And I say that from the 30 years, I mean, parking's always been a nightmare living there. And I guess perhaps this is a challenge about Newtown and the planning is that everything's so local. So we have a very specific issue at the end of Coromandel Street, Colville Street. Those of you who walk through the Southern Walkway will be familiar. You go up the end of Coromandel Street, you walk up, the road gives up, heads up the hill, zigzags up. There's 10 houses up off that zigzag. We don't have street access. So what that means is that the 10 houses or 12, I think people are infilling, uh, when we have cars, they get parked down on the street below. So one street is trying to serve, affect one street of parking is basically serving two streets of houses. And it's always overloaded. The the survey that was done by Kangaura when they're putting in the new housing units there, 20 housing units on one side of the road, 16 on the other, um, they found over 100% usage of the car parks. You say, why? Because people are parking all over the damn place. Um, and it's peaking in the weekend. So a couple of things for this policy. It, seven days actually matters. Um, we, we get overloaded in the weekend more than in the weeks. Um, and I think similar to that point in the hospice, the visitor permit, the current idea, I think, is to have them booked in advance, that's really tricky, you know, registering cars, if we could have a sort of a generic permit, perhaps. Um, yeah, so that was my, my, my main points. Just think really locally when it comes down to the implementation. I mean, the basic concept is great, it should be seven days a week. And um, I thought I'd just take the opportunity, though, and parking is an extra thing, is uh, think about pricing could be relative to the size of the vehicle, probably the area it takes up. The streets are getting narrower because the cars are getting bigger. It's really noticeable. So thank you. Now that's quite a good point. Um, uh, yeah, one I've thought about as well. We should make some small car parks. Um, yeah. Um, do we have any questions for James? Ah, right. Councillor Abdurrahman. Uh, kia ora, James, and thank you for coming today. And I know that is straight and this very pretty tricky. So when you ask for seven days in this case, are you specifically asking only for Coromandel, Coromandel Street or are you asking widely the scheme to be seven days? Um, and my, my second question to that is, how did you hear about this consultation? Did you get a chance to do, speak to our uh, officers and what the consultation looks like? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll do the process first. I've just gone through the public process. You invited consultation. I went filled in the online thing, which I think got the results in your agenda. There's a box to tick. Are you willing to, to present to the group? So I said, yes, that, 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 no more, no less. 
Um, yeah, on the substantive, the seven day. Yeah, and I think, you know, like the hospice people point out, I mean, hospital and the hospice are seven day operations. There are cars parked on Alexandra Road in the town belt all day, every day from seven in the morning more because the nurses are parking up there in the town belt. Um, I mean, I, I, I hear what they're saying, that the people have to come to work, but our fundamental problem is too many cars for the space. And anything that changes that, is, you know, I think we have to look at better public transport. Great. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, James. Um, we appreciate you coming in and, and, well, being here online and taking the time to speak to us personally. It's really useful. Well, thank you very okay. much for your time. Um, so we're now moving to Lucy Telfabana. Just, oh, hello, Lucy. How are you? <laughs> you probably heard me give the spiel about the five minutes, so... Uh, yes, yes, I did. Okay, <laughs> so where you go? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so you will have seen my written submission, and I really just want to reiterate my key concern. Really, is that I haven't seen any evidence provided that the change to 180-minute parking will, in fact, resolve residents' parking difficulties, rather than just creating a three-hourly game of, of musical cars as opposed to musical chairs. Um, so I would really like to see that residence parking areas, specified residence parking areas retained until it can be demonstrated that the new scheme has the desired effect on shifting those workers to other transport modes. Because otherwise there's this, this period where in fact it could potentially just make things worse rather than better for those of us who are trying to park there. Um, the other thing I want also wanted to mention is, is again, that, that need to ensure that the, the needs of people who are currently using residence parking with mobility stickers is addressed. So I know there's a family across the road from me who have a mobility sticker and they, or permit, and they have residence parking directly outside their house. If all of that became 180 minute parking, they wouldn't have that space directly outside the house. They would have to go in the streets roundabout like the rest of us, and I would just like to see something carved out in that space. Um, and then the only other thing that I'd mentioned just in regard to, to a recent submission is that um, Mary Potter Hospice did choose um, to build a residential um, apartment block on its own site, which created further parking pressure on our street. So I rather think it's the author of its own demise in terms of availability of parking. I, I support what they do, but I think it does need to be the responsibility of workplaces in the Newtown area to provide parking for their workers where that's required, not shifting that problem onto the residents. And that is reiterated in the Wellington City Council parking policy of 2020, where it's clear that residents' parking needs outweigh those of short-term visitors. Uh, that's all for now. Questions? Yeah, thank you. Um, I had a question about the number of vehicles people have in, uh, in their own homes, you know, for their own use. I see you've only got one. I, I can see pressure's just getting worse in this direction. How feasible do you think it is for most people in Newtown to just manage with a vehicle, one vehicle per household? I know that there are flats in the street where there's there's more than one vehicle in that household. Um, we did have two for a while and we kept the second vehicle for longer than, than really we needed it because we needed to be able to shift our cars in order to create space for our builder when he was on site each morning. Um, so, you know, th there are a range of ways that, that people need or don't need cars in response to the parking situation. Um, I would say that if council wanted to do a survey of, of the actual parking needs and, and car parks, um, cars being used in Newtown, that would solve that question. Um, Councillor, thank you, Councillor Chung. I think, thanks very much for this. Um, just a query, if you have a residence parking certificate there and the, the owners of that car go to work, <laughs> then how would, would they possibly move the car around if it's changed to three hours? Uh, so they'll be working nearby and they will pop out in their brakes and move the car. 
Oh, I see. Yep. Okay. Um, but for they people already do that between shifts now. So they will they will do a a swap with someone that they know is coming in for the next shift in the afternoon. I've seen it happen. Very time consuming and a, a sure. Bit of a waste but of time, but yeah. also, I, I mean, I, I remember in two thousand and five when the um, house, when the hospital shifted from two dollar a day parking to eight dollar a day parking, and that is when the parking problem appeared overnight. Mm. And it was clear that that people will do what they need to do in order to be able to, to drive to work. Mm. So, yeah. great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have a oh, Councillor Abdurrahman may have just put you to the post there. Uh, kia ora, Lucy, and thank you for coming today. And my question to you is: you mentioned about the mobility uh, parking near your area. And as part of this uh, paper last time, we passed an amendment regards to making free for mobility uh, users and half price for most of the community who got, you know, um, financially an issue, low paid income. Do you support that initiatives? I certainly support, yes, the, the um, residence parking being free for people who need to use accessibility parking um, and and I would support the lower cost residence parking for uh, for those who who have um, income stress uh, I could go off on another rant, rant but I don't have time so I won't. <laughs> <laughs> thank you well we do have your written um, submission as well which has got quite a lot of useful input as well as from hearing from you but thank you Lucy thank you yeah. Okay, we're moving now to um, Freya um, do I, from Berenport. Welcome, Freya. Hello, <laughs> Good. I haven't done this before, so it's, it's all right. You welcome to sit at the table if it makes you feel more comfortable. Oh, that's all right. I'll yeah. Have the full five minutes. So, um, I think my written submission basically says most of the things that um, myself and um, my housemates and um, we have quite a close street, so I've spoken to them as well, but. Yeah, I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk to you all as well. So um, I actually wanted to ask you questions, but I think that's maybe not allowed. But I was just curious if you would be able to answer how the parking structure of the 30% of Berenpore and the, res the split between like residents, um, kind of standard tra traditional parking scheme was developed. Um, if that's something you could answer, and if not, then I'll just go on to my kind of broader submission, I guess. Yep. No, I'm sorry, this process is about you telling us things <laughs> rather than us giving you information. <laughs> right, okay, um, that's fine. So um, I guess the concern for me is, um, so I'm living on Herald Street, which is sort of the first, I think one of the first house streets that is sort of not included in this 30% scheme. So um, we already have quite high, uh, like dense uh, parking in the day, like when people commute into work. So it's not just uh, residents' uh, cars. So I guess the concern is that that will increase when surrounding streets are being included in the scheme and our street is not included in the scheme. Um, and I guess the $195 um, you know, payment might be cost prohibitive for some people. So I guess the concern is that they won't pay and they will just walk the extra 30 seconds and park on a street that's not included in the scheme. So I was just keen, I guess, to, I guess, highlight the concern about the 30% and maybe it needs to be broader, maybe like more streets included in the scheme. I've spoken to some of my neighbours and they're definitely would prefer the scheme to be, yeah, like more inclusive than I guess uh, 30%. Um, yeah, I, I did some analysis on like what the number could be, but I don't think that's maybe necessary to um, discuss now given I can't really understand the um, methodology behind developing to 30%. So I'll just move on from that. Um, and then, um, yeah, I guess, that's like the main thing. And then I'm, my neighbours are also have highlighted the concern of the n removing the right turn from Rintoul Street onto, um, no, sorry, Luxford onto Rintoul and putting additional pressure on surrounding streets. And I think that's been added in quite a few submissions. And at the moment, they've just put the um, 
over the last two weeks they've put um, a zebra crossing on that, uh, just on that corner, and um, they kind of blocked off the right turn already and it was caused significant traffic going round. And so I guess we just already had a taster over the weekend and last week on what that could look like moving forward. So, um, yeah, that's basically the things I wanted to highlight. Well, thank you, Freya, and I have a question from um, Councillor Rogers for you. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, yeah, I'm totally agreeing with you there that, you know, when you do draw this line about limited parking uh, availability, people do tend to just move over that line. Um, I guess my question would be sort of if we had to put a line somewhere, where would that that go? Um, sort of how far out? Is this something that needs to be more of a citywide approach or did you have any sort of reflections on that? Yeah, well, I mean, the methodology I would have taken was to sort of map out um, people who have off-street parking in the whole area, mm. understand how many cars are in the area and then work, a, work out a number based on that um, methodology. But obviously I don't know the methodology you guys have done, but that's just what I think would make sense because, yeah, obviously the number can't be like an arbitrary number, otherwise it could be 30 or it could be 40, and then those people who are at that boundary would then have maybe the same issue. But perhaps, yeah, if it was done on, I guess, like a user and off-street parking kind of method, then it might be a bit more, I guess, transparent onto how the, the number's developed. Awesome, thank you. And Councillor Chung. Thank you very much, Freya. Um, you mentioned about the turn from Rental Street into Luxford Street causing some issues. Um, do you think that's because it's um, it's not required, or do you, is there another way that you would suggest to do that? Um, so I think. Uh, sorry, like, 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 sorry. Does that clash with the cr with the crossing that you also mentioned? Uh, so the crossing's new, yeah. um, and I think the the council's plan i don't know whether that was developed in conjunction with the crossing but if there's no right turn you have to either go you have to take like an earlier turn not through barrenpool village or you have to go basically around past the um almost like towards the zoo and yes. back around um and that just basically causes a lot of traffic on te Whara-Puri street oh, and yes. then up through um i think it's Adelaide Road, like which comes out of um, Newtown. So mm. it's just doing like an extra loop on streets that already have like quite significant traffic. So, I mean, for me, the solution would be like just to not block off the right turn because I don't think it's particularly unsafe now. Mm. Um, I thought maybe it was um, associated with the uh, biking scheme but I have neighbours who bike and they're like that's really not a safety concern there and I guess now that the zebra crossing is there it's like an even safer mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah okay that's, thank that's great thank you thank you Freya um we're out of time but thank you for that information it's really appreciated right um moving now to Duncan Smythe Smith um Oh, hello there, Welcome. it's Duncan Smythe. Hi. Smyth. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for um, yeah for for um, uh, giving me this this time. Um, so look, I'm I'm a hospital worker, so is my wife, and um, I'm I, I guess I'm speaking as an individual, but um, you know this this is going to affect a number of other people who who work at the hospital. Um, so I'm really um, speaking on behalf of, of them as well. So, look, very aware that there are parking issues in Newtown. I, I can imagine it is frustrating and difficult for residents um, on these streets when they can't get, get parks or they, they can't get, um, you know, their, their visitors round. Um, but I, I don't think that the proposed changes solve the underlying problem, which is the shortage of parking. So... Um, one of the issues you have is that, I mean, yes, you, you can't necessarily park in, um, around other hospitals um, around the country um, in, in bigger cities, but um, this park, um, so this hospital is not in the middle of town, and so for a lot of people it's not necessarily easy to get to by public transport, where it would be easier if it was in the, the centre of town. And so you might make life easier for some residents, but you are going to, if this um, goes through at the moment. It's going to make life extremely difficult for many health workers, and I understand that's you know more than a thousand staff who park in Newtown for work every every weekday. 
And so, I mean, you, you will have seen from other submissions that I've seen, you know, from the, the, the hospice and the, the neonatal units as well, that we have, you know, huge shortages in, in many areas. And there are some areas that really are in crisis. And it is, and Wellington does have difficulty attracting people because it's expensive to live near the hospital when people, you know, can't afford to live near the hospital. And so they find it easier to work at, you know, Hutt or Palmerston North or, or something like that. Um, and so I, I think there is a real risk that you're going to see people leaving as a result of this, which will put further strain on services on services at the hospital. And so I think, I mean, hospital staff have, have really been forgotten a bit in this process. So, I mean, I there's already not enough parking at the hospital. I mean, I spoke with a colleague yesterday who was complaining they couldn't get a park on site um, they, that they pay $140 a month for. Um, and so there's already a shortage. And so on day one of the changes, you're just going to add, you know, hundreds and hundreds of cars um, to, you know, to to try to find parks on site that already aren't there. So it's going to, you know, it's going to be a bit chaotic. Um, so I, I, I understand, you know, of course, a minority of people could probably make other arrangements, um, but but most people who, who do drive have pretty good reasons to need to drive, be it where they live or the lack of public transport to the hospital, their shifts or, um, you know, um, in my situation, I have um, children who take to daycare or school prior. Um, and so either either the hospital, you know, provide will provide some parking permits, they'll either provide everyone parking permits and then if you have you know, you don't get there at a certain time, you know, you'll have a whole heap of people who can't park or um, or they'll just deny permits to a number of people. And so um, I, I guess what I think this is doing is this is shifting the problem onto another group of, of people. And I, I feel I feel it's a little bit of a, a kick in the guts for hospital workers because it will make um, life tough for many people. So I, I am very aware that longer term, I think, you know, I agree changes do need to be made. I mean, I'm very happy to pay to um, you know, park on hospital site or, or at another um, parking place if needed. But um, I mean, I wonder if the council can work with the hospital and, and come up with a with a solution, or you know, consider delay. You know, working with the hospital and consider delaying these changes until there is um, an alternative for sufficient parking on site or an alternative for the hospital workers that um, that need it. Because I think you're you're going to. Yeah, when when you know, if and when the starts of this proceeds, we're going to have a, a bit of a chaotic situation for a lot of people. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I actually, oh Duncan, sorry, I do have a question because right. I noticed that mm. you live relatively close to the hospital. You know, mm. compared to some mm. people, do you think it's feasible for people to use other methods? Um, you know, you live relatively so, close, but you need to use a car. Can you explain our, a bit more our, about what's going on? So our, our issue, our issue is daycare. So we have to take our, you know, we take our daughter to a daycare, um, uh, and. Uh, it's, it would be very difficult for us. We can't really get public transport to the daycare, and so um, you know we could we could yes we, I could take a bus if we're going directly to the hospital, um, but it's the daycare. It's going to the daycare and then getting to the hospital. That's difficult, and we're already very time pressured as it is getting our child to daycare before. Um, sort of after daycare opens and before before work starts. So if, if there was no daycare for me, I would I would be fine. I mean, the, the only other thing we could we could do would, would just be um, it would really be cycling, buying e-bikes. But it, it is difficult with one, young kids and and um, you know in, in the middle of of winter and it, um, and uh, yeah, it, just with um, with with weather and with. Um, uh, with with hills and things, um, you know, it can it can be a bit difficult. Um, but um, for, for say for a lot of people, it's 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 sort of where um, it's it's sort of where they live. But yes, I, I do live relatively close. But it's the school and daycare mm -hmm. issue which makes it difficult yeah, for I don't me know personally. I'm on the spot, but it's useful to understand some of those kind of nuances. No, no, yep. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Yeah, um, we have actually run out of time. I'm really sorry because it was cool. very useful information. No, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks um, for your time. Thank you. Um, Stephen, welcome. Um, just find a good spot for my speech. All right, kia ora councillors. I'm Stephen. I'm a resident, dad, and registered nurse who lives in Newtown. You may me remember me from other such submissions, such as the previous Newtown Baron Poor parking plan. So I'll touch on past points and changes to the plan. People lose their minds over parking. All rational sense disappears into the madness of finding that last free park. 
Free on-street parking is something that many of us have come to know and expect. However, parking your private vehicle on a street like a coat on a rack should not be subsidised by all taxpayers. 95% of all cars' life is spent parked. And when you have 4.1 million cars, close to one per person in New Zealand, and a busy inner city suburb with competing needs of a hospital, schools, shops, and don't forget residents, you start to see the problem. We can't just create more parks by destroying housing or building expensive parking buildings. First, we need to create good alternatives to get into Newtown by car, which the council is already making massive project progress on. Thank you sincerely. Um, second, we need to regulate parking in Newtown. As someone who considers themselves well-read and a nerd when it comes to city planning and parking, which I know is a weird niche topic, um, I can say that this plan is very, very good. It still involves free parking, but it is time limited. The new time limit of 180 is great for visitors of the area and especially those with appointments at Te Whatu Ora. It enables residents to still park their car on the street, but restricted to a manageable of one or two cars. It restricts problematic parking behaviours such as people in the city parking their cars in Newtown for weekend getaways. And controversially, Te Whatu Ora workers who do not use the provided parking and insist on driving. It means that residents such as myself have struggled to find parks for decades. We will have less people cruising for parks as parks will be easier to come by. This, I, this one I'm really serious about. It will reduce traffic, making streets safer, such as for my children as they walk to school. Some things that I would like to see improved. The ability to on-sale visitor parking permits or a Wellington City Control website. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. So if that's controlled, that would be great. Providing on-street bike cages for those of us who own heavy bikes and have stair-only access to our houses. That alongside frequent car share-only spots, um, sorry, that we have more frequent car share-only spots that will help make the shift to car-free lifestyle easier, something I would dearly love to do. I do think the stage rollout would create parking chaos in Newtown East. I cannot really comment on the Bear and Paul segment, although I was really interested in the previous um, person saying that they'd rather increase the parking area. That makes a lot of sense to me. Please be bold. It may not be popular, but we cannot keep giving away a free commodity as our city fringe suburbs grow. We cannot keep subsidising car use for free parking and expect it not to be a problem. Let's do this for safer streets, less congestion and a better allocation of a limited resource. Thank you, Stephen. Now do we have questions? Councillor Abdurrahman. Uh, kia ora, James, and thank you for coming. And my question to you is, you mentioned in, in your written submission about the staging of the parking scheme from west and the east, and could you please touch on that, how that will impact on the ground. And the second part of my question is, do you support giving a discount for people who got um, income, uh, low income, and then free for mobility uh, car parks? Uh, I think both of those questions are pretty easy to answer. I live in Newtown West, so actually the stage rollout doesn't matter for me, but I do think that it'll mean that more people will use the free parking in Newtown East, so it'll just create more congestion and issues over there. The rollout should be done at the same time, and if that means delaying the rollout, then I'm actually okay with that. Um, what I would also say to your second point is, obviously, we should make life easier for people who need a car or um, who struggle to um, pay for the parking, yeah. But Thank you. Uh, even, Thank better you. Than, even better than that would be providing better free public transport, um, better um, alternate choices so people don't have to own a car because owning a car is really uh, bleep expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I think we probably have come to the end of our time, but thank you very much, and um, your information, as always, is very useful. Um, so we'll move now to John um, online. Thank you, John. Welcome. Um, there's five minutes for you to present, and that needs to include questions if you wish. Okay, well, Mike, John, are you there? I'm wondering if we move to the next person and then come back. So, Gavin, are you online? Uh, yes, I'm here. Oh, lovely. We, we're ha ready to hear from you if you're ready to speak to us, and it's five minutes, which does need to include yeah. questions. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Um, living in Newtown on Daniel Street, opposite a church and a stone's throw away from Mediterranean foods, um, figuratively, not um, realistically. Um, I like the details um, of the proposed change. Um, I think the stated objectives and the considerations that you've made for residents of all types are really good. Um, so overall, I like the design and the engagement that you've done. Um, and I know that living in the area for a number of years, um, doing nothing is not a solution. The status quo is um, uh, not sustainable. Um, I've made some issues on this change, spoken to your teams at one of their outreach sessions, um, which was interesting seeing some of the vitriol that was thrown at them by others. Um, and during COVID, I attended an information session, a seminar on the economics of residence parking, um, which has informed my opinion. Um, the key thing I want to point out is there are some areas, like it was mentioned at the end of Coromandel Street, where there are um, pressures on parking um, at the weekend as well. Um, I live on Daniel Street, opposite a church, um, and like I said, very close to some very successful um, restaurants, which I'm not complaining about. Um, and um, I think it's, a, it's great that they're, that they're there and they're doing well. Um, but there are uh, a number of pressures that on well, on Saturday mornings, um, all of Sunday, they're often the church is having events all day and um, the parking in the whole area will be um, um, completely and utterly full. Um, it can be very, very difficult to get a park. And if there's an event on during the week, that's, that's the odd thing. You know, you could learn to live with that. Um, it, it's just the fact that... Um, it's not the whole of Newtown. Um, as was mentioned by the earlier speaker, there are pockets due to um, um, the geography of where, where houses are um, and where associated businesses are, that there are a lot of pressures. There'll be a lot of other people who are living near um, places where they, um, they'll they have pressures as well. But I think where we are on Daniel Street, um, you've got the hospital relatively close, you've got the church directly opposite, um, and you've got um, uh, multiple um, very nice um, eateries nearby. Um, on weekends, uh, it can be very, very difficult um, to find a park. The only the only blessing is there's a residence parking right outside um, where we live. Um, incidentally, when there are issues with residence parking, um, i.e. people non-residence parking in there, it's almost impossible to get anything done about it because the cars don't get towed. Um, so um, one of the things I'd hope for is um, more, uh, well, a better enforcement of um, of the new rules. So I agree with it. I like it. The status quo can't continue and we'll be in a worse position if we do nothing. That's my solution. Thank you. That's very succinct. Uh, do we have any questions? I'm quite interested in you saying the status quo can't continue. I don't disagree. Um, but ha how have you seen it change even in the last few years with the parking pressures? Um, well, the biggest thing was Mediterranean foods um, uh, changing to a rest uh, mainly a restaurant um, from a store. So uh, uh, from a store. So. Um, and you've got you know, Chichi Akachi around the corner, you've got the Mexican restaurant um, and others around there. And um, there's a lot more, a lot of people in Newtown during the weekends, which is a, which is a success. It's a th thriving community. Um, it's the, whenever there's an event on, or we, we, well, quite regularly on a Friday or a Saturday night, the area can be um, absolutely packed. If the church has got an event on, which it often does, um, that's um, uh, that's interesting. One of the things we've noticed about the church opposite is often you, they've got a lot of underground car parking. They often don't open it up until really close to the service. So they wait for the streets to fill up around the church and then they, at the last minute, they open up the car parking for some of the people to get in there. Um, but um, I think just with more commercial activity and more opportunities for people it's um, um, that's what's actually changed the numbers of people. 
Okay, thank you. Um, we have a quick one from Councillor Rogers. Oh, are you all right, are you? All right, well, thank you very much. That's interesting and that, uh, yeah, that detailed local knowledge is really helpful. Thank you very much. Um, we'll move now to, um, oh, well, actually, John. Have we got John online now? Yes. yes. Welcome, John. Apologies. Apologies, I had some technical issues. Um, kia ora, councillors. Hey, um, I'm here as a resident of uh, Newtown, and um, I'm really just here to say that what I think uh, you're proposing uh, seems pretty reasonable. Um, and um, I can see that you've got a really tricky task here. You know, you're balancing a whole bunch of competing demands for a hotly contested um, public resource. Um, and in my view, the updated scheme seems to provide a pretty sound set of criteria for effectively rationing um, that resource. So, um, you know, you're balancing the needs of residents and visitors and, and so on. So um, the changes that you've made um, to the proposal, I think, are good. Um, and I have a couple of suggestions um, for you to consider to improve it further. Um, I can see from written submissions that there's some pretty strong opposition to the proposal from some submitters. Uh, I, I think a lot of it, I guess a lot of this is about expectations. Um, there's many other parts of the city that don't have free unrestricted parking. And, and in the time that I've lived in Wellington, um, it's actually mostly been in places with, with parking restrictions. So maybe I'm just used to it. But I, I think what you've proposed in this particular scheme is more generous and maybe more flexible than say coupon parking um, as a resident you know coupon parking you only get uh, two hours visitors only get two hours free you don't get those free visitor passes and in areas where there's a lot of residents only parking it can be quite tricky for visitors so I, I actually think this is um, broadly quite quite workable um, and if you can make that user experience for the visitor passes good uh, and the trade coupon system is easy and practical, then, then to me, um, I, I think it seems reasonable. So um, there's a couple of uh, tweaks that I'd encourage you to um, consider just to round out the scheme and make it more workable. Um, I think the strain, that, that sort of, sorry, not, well, it is a little bit strange in my view, but the staged introduction of the um, parking scheme is going to put a lot of pressure on parking in Newtown East. Um, and I, I, I personally, I can't really see the benefit of that, that staging. Newtown East residents will get squeezed by, I think, commuter and hospital parkers. I, I'm in Newtown West, so I see I see a lot of that um, stuff happening on, on Rental Street. And, and once that parking becomes un unavailable to those users, that, that can put a bit of pressure on um, the surrounding areas. So um, uh, people who live in Newtown East won't be able to park in other parts of Newtown. So I think that a... Um, cluster park kind of situation like that might lose you quite a bit of public confidence in the scheme generally if that does happen. So I, I'd, I guess I'd encourage you to um, consider making those changes all at once or at least have a plan for what you'll do if if those Newtown East residents um, do do get squeezed, um, you know, maybe enable them to park in Newtown West. Um, in my written submission, I um, suggested that uh, you perhaps allow more parks, uh, parking permits per household, but, but just kind of differentiate the pricing. So um, the purpose of that would be to allow for a wider range of households, um, household types, you know, with flats or people who have um, various, you know, work or business vehicles. Um, they may have that need uh, to have more vehicles, but uh, their willingness to pay might be is potentially higher. Um, and I guess going back to expectations, when we were looking at when we were looking at for a home in Newtown, it became pr obvious pretty quickly that if you wanted to have a car and you wanted somewhere reliable to park it, you'd, you'd, you'd have to pay for that park. So um, whether you buy it or rent it or whatever. So that was about, say, six or so years ago. Um, that was quite easy to figure out back then, but probably harder to anticipate 40 years ago. So I, I'd suggest maybe um, looking at a way to make it um, harder for newer uh residents and organisations over time to get those uh, resident permits. Um, and the reason for that would be that people who are intending to move here, developers who are intending to develop here, um, they know what to expect um, and they know that it's unlikely that they'll have good access to on-street parking in the long term. And I'd really like to see that um, the parking scheme as it's rolled out more broadly um, help set those expectations over time as you introduce it to 
um, areas that you're looking to intensify. Maybe that's a mechanism to help. Wow, there's a lot of good thoughts there. So thank you, John. Um, we have a question from Councillor Chung. <coughs> Thanks very much, John. Um, I appreciate that. Um, just a quick question. Um, you were saying, you mentioned that you would think it's a good idea to extend um, the availability of residence parking um, vouchers to actually um, to enable people to have multiple cars in, in a property. Um, but do you think that would um, increase the, the problems of parking there? Because there are some people there that um, that are finding it difficult to even park with a, with a car mm. permit. Yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, I guess, so So um, I don't remember the exact number, but you, you did a parking survey some time ago, maybe like about a year ago, um, and it was around 80% of household households had about sort of, up, I think, one or two vehicles. Um, it's not that many households that have more. The reason where I'm coming from is that I, I, I quite like the diversity of Newtown. I love living here because you've got different types of households and... Uh, where people might have more vehicles if you price it accordingly. So if it say costs, I don't know, three times as much to get a, to get a, a residence park for your fourth vehicle, um, that that can put a natural cap on it potentially. Um, it's just something to consider. I I I, I would have thought that by pricing it, um, using a pricing mechanism, you can control that you can control that demand a bit more. So I wouldn't okay. I wouldn't charge the same amount. Thank you very much. I think yeah. there are some technical difficulties actually doing that with the laws we have, but um, it's a useful yeah. idea. Appreciate and that. thank you very much for your um, submission. Thanks. We've run out of time, <laughs> but thank you. Um, Steve, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All yours. Kia ora, uh, councillors and Others, uh, the Alec introduced Michelle. He's not Hi, been um, with us before. She's uh, supporting me in the residence uh, um, submission here. And the Residents Association, of course, is, is me, represent, represents views from all over Newtown. We, contrary to some media reports, we have had a plan for many years that would have provided 30,000 additional homes in Newtown, <laughs> and we do support the growth and vitality of the of the suburb. We're, we're Pleased you made changes to the um, early feedback we provided to this, this particular plan. Uh, we have been p uh, asking for some sort of uh, support with the um, uh, for parking for many years, and it's good to see things happening. And I should get rid of that. Our main concern is that um, what we don't believe that one plan can work for the whole suburb. And we've seen people talking about this just, yeah, well, well, in 10 minutes I've been sitting here, that we need some sort of scope for variations. And two examples we have are Balmoral Terrace, which we've been talking about for a long time, and also Roy Street have some quite unique uh, challenges. Um, I'm not sure I should have gone down there over the weekend when the, when the national track meet was on. I very much doubt there's any parking on Roy Street for the weekend because they have the Newtown Stadium there. And so let's see something we would ask that there be the thought to how that can be, how we can have more direct feedback. In the early stages, we were promised this would happen, but we're not sure that it uh, did in a meaningful way from the discussions with our members and others. Mm. The, and you'll hear more about Roy Street later when Peter gets to talk about it. We also asked the council to support the hospital in building more parking of their own for staff and patients. We've been discussing parking with hospital authorities since before the hospital was built. Um, and there have been some changes, but the overall, overall hasn't been an, enough change there, apparently, so we're told by their customers. That, and that's a problem both for patients uh, who may not know where to find parks in Newtown, and for presumably there are some staff uh, who do have uh, have to bring a car. Um, the, but of course we acknowledge too that the regional council has put on the Hospital Express bus, which seems to be good, and it's running again now, which was, wasn't for a little while there. And so we're making progress, but we do ask that you specifically work with the hospital to see how they can improve the parking that they offer. 
the we that's the extent really you've seen our written submission many of you have been listening to us going on about this for quite a while and yeah we hope we're open for questions aren't we thank you um steve and michelle oh yes i wasn't going to talk but since sitting here um an experience of having to deal with a mother-in-law that was very sick and having to bring her in from Kapiti to the hospital and being in the A&E for long hours, the stress of worrying about car parking really added to it. And I know we live in Newtown, but we needed to drive straight to the hospital, sit there for 10, 12 hours, and then run backwards and forwards and wait to see what's happening. And I think the biggest thing is it's easy to talk about the residents of Wellington, but it is a suburb that has people coming in from out of town. So the council and the hospital working together to building a car park is not a bad idea. It's something that will benefit the community, help you with this issue, which possibly can make it worse because you're just gonna do it in stages. And that's not taking away the green look of people riding to and from work, but there is a life out of work. And a lot of people in my street come from country towns. So they can't get a bus up to Gisborne or Napier or Paiatoa in the middle of nowhere. So you also need to think about those people. Mm. And I strongly wish you'd done what you said you were going to do a year ago, and that was to meet the people in the street and find out what the people who live in the area and in that street, how they are affected and how they want to look out for their neighbours but not compete for car parks. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, thanks. Thank sorry. you. I just... Um, I, I, well, I do have a few questions, so you know, they might sort of help draw out some information as well. And I am going to allow them because, you know, I, I appreciate you representing a lot of people. Um, so we'll have a time extension a little bit. Um, so I've got one from Councillor Abdurrahman, and one from Councillor Chung and one from Councillor Foon. But I would ask that you keep your questions really tight and answers tight too, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, Councillor Abdurrahman. Uh, Kira, Stephen and Michelle, and thank you so much for coming. And this is Newtown, residents always contributing positively. Now, it's not a comment time, but I thought I should plug that in. And my question is, how much of that consultation has happened with you over the last six months, what the engagement looks like? I know uh, there is a consultation drop in sessions that happened in Newtown uh, Hall and, and and other two places, but what that looks like with the resident associations. Um, for me personally, I needed to talk to someone, and I have emailed a few people, councillors, and I'm still waiting for the reply. So, I'm sort of curious to know if your emails are filtered, because um, I wanted to talk about our street because it's slightly different, but I wanted a positive outcome. So, I could have done with having a one-on-one. -on -one for our street, especially when we've got a very diverse street full of flats, long term, um, KO, yeah. And so we're concerned for all of our residents um, coming from all walks of life. Okay. Yeah. So it could have been, it would have been nice to be a bit more personal, yeah, because it's a huge change. What street is your street, Michelle? Um, Balmoral, okay. a troublesome street, so okay. we, need, we also need to address fixing our street, which has been going on for 20 years, so. Okay, yeah. right, we that's useful. And we just need to keep moving. Um, so I've got a question from Councillor Chung and then Councillor Foon. Thank you very much, um, Michelle and Steve. I appreciate you coming in. Um, my question is about Roy Street. Now, I've been up, I, I'm a fairly frequent visitor to, to the zoo, and I've noticed that um, the zoo visitors actually like parking in Roy Street as well. So do you find that that's an issue? Like, does that, you, you mentioned that you were going to talk more about Roy Street, so... We have, a, we have a submission from a group of residents coming up later, so maybe we'll hold that question, because yep. yep. okay. they're going to be the experts on that. Yep. Um, that is a specific thing that I've addressed in their submission. I was reading yeah. last night. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you for asking. Um, thank you. Yeah, um, good. So we'll move to Councillor Foon, and then we'll have to wrap it up. Um, kia ora, thanks for coming in. Uh, just around the staging, did uh, was there a position from Newtown residents on that? We couldn't agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Welcome but to council. But there would be concern yeah. that are you creating a bigger issue by staging it, but I do like the idea of a two-year process to walk through um, some of the issues and potentially maybe start on a car park somewhere. I mean, basically, yeah. if you implement it and it works perfectly, then there's no need to stage it. Mm. But that's a bit late to know by then. Yeah. And also, you, you, it's one of the bus, busiest streets you're removing 600 car parks from. You know, could, could you have done another street that was less busy? Because you've got major hospitals, you've got doctors in that street. It's not saying don't do it, but is it the right street to start with? You know, you've got two big aged care, no cr zebra crossing, or lights at the top. Yeah, yeah and people under stress because they're going to a hospital. And some of the wakeful... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm a bit passionate about it. Sorry. And, and that busy yeah. street you're referring to would be Mean Street or Rinto? Uh, um, is it Rinto? By Athleta Park. Oh, yes, 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 Rinto, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. That's been very helpful, and I do appreciate the time that you've taken to come and speak to us in person. And thank you for being thank patient you. with thank us. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we will now move to Bill Vittorio Colosimo. So, online? Oh, okay. Thank you. Welcome. You. Not sure I got your name correct, but I hope I did. No, it's a, it's okay. a Thank you. Uh, but, yeah. All righty. Um, You've got to wave your hands in the air when you say. So, it's five minutes. I did allow the last group a little extra because they're representing a residence association. I'll but try and bash through it. Yeah, five okay. Minutes, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I want to share with you how my home will be affected by the Berenpo New Town Parking Scheme. How it directly impacts me as a resident, how it impacts people of Rintel Street. In my submission, I challenge the city design team to think harder about the problems we have as a city implementing the uptake and improvement of cycle use. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but I'm unable to envision this scheme improving or enhancing the livability of my street or resolving existing parking challenges in Newtown. These photos show Rintel, Stoke, Millwood and Colombo Street at 4 a.m. They're almost at full capacity. All these cars have, will have an owner asleep in a home nearby. The scheme advocates the removal of nearly 100 car parks. Where will these vehicles be provisioned parking? Um, I'm self-employed, I use ladders, equipment, I still work at my home. How will I secure a park close to my home to load and unload? How is it possible to remove car parking spaces and improve car parking? I can only imagine the scheme will negatively impact on the value of my property, market value of my property. I spoke with a Newtown relative. They suggested with no ability to park outside, the residents it would take about 100k off the sale price. Will this drop be re reflected in the rateable value of my home? I don't think so. We have old houses in Rintel Street. Mine was built in 1904. Old homes need maintenance and upkeep. They require service vehicles, large vehicles, large trucks for scaffolding, building materials, maybe you're re-roofing, skip bins, down to tradies installing a new kitchen. As residents, maybe you want a new appliance, place a desk, a new sofa, a bed, day-to-day -day activities, removing the green waste, <coughs> a weekly shop and a howling suburb. With no parking outside our homes, how do we undertake these normal household tasks? Outside my home is 45 car parks. They'll become 14. This does not fill me with any confidence about reliably parking anywhere near my home. Adding COVID, a holiday abroad, illness, any number of things that people will leave their car parked on the street, it will translate to even less parking. With absolutely no assurance of securing resident parking permit, this fills me with apprehension and dread. I challenge the city design team to dig deeper and think harder. Where's the residence loading zone? The P10 park that allows us as residents at least a way of getting our shopping, elderly mother, baby, or whatever at home. The ability to quickly stop at home for the forgotten something. There's no assurance or contingency to enable us to plan for the unexpected need to dash home for one reason or another. <clears throat> the Rental Street cycle lane throws up red flags to me. I'll be the first to admit that Although I have a design degree, I'm not a city planner, but safe, safe streets have lower speeds. Removing the car parking will 
and introducing the bike lane may actually encourage higher vehicle speed with the illusion of more space. In essence, you'll turn Rintoul Street from a residential street into a high volume traffic corridor. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a bit fluy. <coughs> What about flexible zones that allow the street to be used as an extension as our home, of our homes? Gateway treatments that alert drivers to indicate they're entering a low speed area. Um, fostering a neighborhood interaction with the non-motorized transportation. <clears throat> and reducing cyclists' stress levels to improve their journey comfort. Where are these things in the scheme that will make it a bit more palatable for me? Um, I've got some other ideas. I, I believe that probably having a cycleway that went from Hanson Street to Torrey Street off the main arterial routes is probably a better way of planning this whole connectivity from Island Bay to uh, the city. Uh, they don't, it won't affect residents' parking. The streets become three lanes of cycleways. They, uh, you can just go straight there. There's one intersection at John Street and you can change a few of the stop signs and boom, you've got three lanes. You can have cargo bikes. You can have maybe potentially people like tradespeople on bigger bikes cycling from Island Bay to the city. Um, yeah, anyway, that's my thoughts. Thanks. Thank you. Now, do we have questions? Councillor Chung. Hey, thanks very much. Um, regarding Hanson Street, you was, are you suggesting that we run a uh, cycle lane down there? Because that's actually very narrow as well, isn't it? No, I'm, I'm suggesting mm. Hanson Street is the ideal street for a cycle lane. You don't take the parking out. You have that as a, that road becomes a cycle lane. There's no through traffic. You can't mm. you can't do the rat race from. That's how I used to take quick ways home from town to Newtown. Mm. I used to go down that street. It's a straight line to Tory mm. Street. You can if you stop off. If you, if you block off the intersections, put stop signs on them, the cyclists have a straight journey. They'll stop at the lights at John Street and you can mess around with those. You can make it easy for them to cycle through. They can be time for cyclists to get up that little rise around John Street and boom. Uh, I mean, you've got, you're not impacting the residents. The residents, people can play in the street when there's no cyclists around. There's no cars going through there. Mm -hmm. Not like my streets, Absolutely, it's diabolical. It's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Th it's very that. passionately put. Thank you very much. Um, right. Well, it, it, we, our last um, submitter actually is going to now come in the afternoon, so we are finished for the morning session. But we do need to formally move that we adjourn the meeting until one thirty p.m. So I will move. Um, I was trying to look for my exact words here. Do I need? Did I just need to say that I move that we adjourn the meeting until 1.30. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Chung. Um, will we vote if you agree? One. Vote two if you don't agree. Um, do we still have Ben online? He may have had to duck out. Ben? Sorry. Just okay, to good. Run. <laughs> yep, um, a yes from me. Okay, so that's been agreed. So we'll now just adjourn the meeting. Um, thank you for your attention so far. We will regroup at 1.30pm. Thank you.